Welcome into First Take. Skip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith in New York, Molly Karam here with you. Gentlemen, how are we? The good word what's is... What's up? What's up? Good word how y'all doing? Steph, good morning. Right? Yeah, the good, good word, word is Steph. Steph. Yes. Yes. How are we doing? I'm doing wonderful. You're good? good. Let's, Let's go. do it, man. All right. Let's like get... the suit, Skip. Like Thank the suit, you. Skip. I appreciate nice, that. Nice, nice, yeah, nice, I like nice. both of you without the tie. I, I was like a billion to one upset. I actually <laughs> got a compliment from Mr. Stephen G.Q. Smith. Well, miracles do happen. Yeah, that was a miracle. You must be rubbing off on him. All right, let's get into it. Game two was a different deal out west last night. So the Warriors tied the Western Conference Finals in large part to Steph Curry, 17 points in the third quarter, including 12 points in a span of one minute in 22 seconds. Yes, you heard me right. The Warriors improved to 12-0 after losses this season. Skip, you had the Warriors in five. Stephen A., you had the Warriors in seven. Let's start with you here, Stephen A. Did last night change your mind about this series? Not at all. It's, uh, I think it's going to go exactly the way I predicted it would go. Uh, both teams would win on the other's home court, on a, you know, obviously a road game. Uh, OKC would win one of games one or two. Uh, Golden State will win one of the games, games three or four. The series will be tied 2-2 after four. And then both teams will protect their home court the rest of the way, and Golden State will close out the series in seven games. Um, I just think that Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook are superstars on the offensive end of the floor. I think they find a way to get it done. Uh, they're definitely ignited in front of that home crowd, that great crowd in Oklahoma City. I think that's going to serve them well. I think we're going to see some epic games um, in there, but I, I think that Golden State will manage to steal one of the two, but OKC will not lose both. Um, and then we're going to see both teams protecting their home court uh, before this series goes to a seventh game. And Steph Curry and Klay Thompson and the crew close this thing out. Uh, Steph Curry put on the show last night, was, reminded everybody that he's the reigning defending two, uh, league MVP, two-time league MVP and a reigning defending champion. He came out there in a span of tw a minute and 20 seconds, scored about 12 to 15 points. Uh, he was absolutely spectacular. And he responded to the challenge. He responded to the moment. That's what he's capable of doing. He didn't seem to be taking go, uh, OKC for granted uh, like he did in game one. I think he got that message. I think he recognizes that Oklahoma City is nothing to be toyed with. Uh, but they, he still went out there last night and showed that he and his squad is fully capable of toying with anybody when they're on their A game. And so it is what it is. I still predicted that the series would go seven games. I'm holding firm to that. But Golden State will manage to win this series. Okay, Stephen A., before I answer Molly's question, I'm going to borrow your line for a second. Say it with me. Steph Curry is a bad man. In fact, he is a bad I, man. apologies to Aaron Rodgers, or Arrogant Rodgers as I call him. Steph Curry is the baddest man on the planet right now. Is, it, is that? That's is that, true. That's true. He just That's is. True. I mean, well, that, what he pulled off in the third quarter last night, I, I just, I've never seen anything. I know Reggie Miller was somewhat capable of those flurries, but not like this. And we see it routinely from Steph. So now back to Molly's question. I did have Golden State in five, and that became somewhat of a long shot when my man Steph Curry went one for six in the fourth quarter of game one. Golden State went one for 10 from three in the fourth quarter of game one. Golden State managed to score a grand total of 14 points in the fourth quarter of game one. And of course, they lost on their home floor at Oracle. But I'm gonna hang in there today, and I know we're both stubborn to a fault here, but I'm gonna hang in with my Golden State in five prediction, and I'll tell you why. Now we've seen four halves of basketball between these two teams, obviously both on Golden State's floor. But Golden State, as you well remember, led after the first half of game one by 13. They led after the first half last night by eight. And they led after the second half last night by 27. So I'm going to repeat what I said to you yesterday, day before to, to Shannon, obviously, when you weren't here. To me, Golden State just simply got overconfident in the third quarter of game one to the point of being cocky. And they took their foot off the defensive gas until the seven minute mark of that third quarter. And as we discussed, Russell Westbrook went into supreme full on attack mode. He finally dropped a three. Then he dropped 19 points in six minutes from the seven minute mark down to the one minute mark in the third quarter. 
and it was a ball game. And Golden State lost its momentum, lost its flow. It, it just lost its way in the fourth quarter. And yet and still, it took a glaringly blown, missed call on Russell Westbrook's travel to take the basketball out of the deadliest shooter's hands, the deadliest shooter in history's hands, for one last possession with 17 seconds left in game one. Could Steph have hit a three to tie or Clay hit a three to tie? I don't know. I would have liked to have at least seen it because fair was fair. But my point to you is, it looks to me like Golden State's just a little better than Oklahoma City. So we saw three regular season games in which Oklahoma City was in some position at points in the fourth quarter, even in overtime in Oklahoma City, to win and, and could not close any of those three deals. And now we've seen a fourth and a fifth game. I still think Golden State should have won game one, up 13 and a half. That, that's just, it's it'd been 88 games, counting regular season and playoffs, since they'd blown a 13-plus point lead at halftime at home. Okay, so when, when you use the operative word, Golden State can steal a game in Oklahoma City, I, I don't even need to go to steal. I, I just think Golden State can win in Oklahoma City. Like, they don't need breaks or luck or whatever you want to call it. I just think if Steph does some of that and Clay gets a hot hand, it's just hard to deal with these people. Obviously, Kevin Durant went nuclear in the first half last night, and I'm sure you would like to, to speak on why what he didn't do in the second half. Russell Westbrook was was shockingly quiet overall last night, but I thought Golden State reasserted itself because Stephen A, for them to win the backboards against the best rebounding team in basketball, 45 to 36, that impressed me a lot. For them to cut down their turnovers and win the turnover battle, 16 for OKC to 12, it's pretty impressive. I thought Andrew Bogut had a, a stretch in the second half where he actually looked spry, if you will. I thought he was banged up to the point of being a liability. And yet, if, if you want to throw back at me Steph's tennis ball swollen elbow, his, his shooting elbow, you got me there, but, but he seemed to be just fine. He dropped all those shots in the third quarter after he, he banged it on the floor. So he said it's okay. I guess I got to go with okay. And now they have four days to get that elbow healed up some, get that swelling reduced and get Bogut as healthy as they can get him. So this is a great break, I think, for Golden State to get ready for Sunday night's Game 3 in that crazy building in Oklahoma City. Well, one of the things I think we can't ignore, Skip, was the impact of, of Steph Curry's greatness. Because when Steph Curry went on a tear, what was the response from Russell Westbrook? This is a guy that basically scored 19 points in the third quarter in game one. But he what did. happened in game two? Yeah, it was 16 points, 12 rebounds in 31 minutes. But dare I say the word pedestrian is appropriate here because it was a relatively pedestrian performance on the part of Russell Westbrook. Usually when anybody even thinks about challenging him, he responds with a level of veracity that is unmatched in today's game. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case last night. While Steph Curry was doing his thing, Russell Westbrook appeared relatively quiet. And so when you look at it from that perspective, now, granted, it wasn't like Steph Curry was guarding him. Klay Thompson was on him most of the time. Uh, and Klay Thompson can really, really defend. Plus, he's a legit 6'6", 6'7". So that's something for Russell Westbrook to have to contend with. It's not like Steph Curry is going straight up against him, which is one of the things that a lot of guys in the league complain about, whether to Chris Paul or to Russell Westbrook and others. They're usually defending Steph Curry, but Steph Curry is not usually defending them because you have athletic wing players like uh, uh, Clay Thompson, uh, Harrison Barnes, and Andre Iguodala, who are all 6'6 and above and are more than capable of defending bigger guards in the NBA game who are ultimately smaller than them. But still in all, in the end, if you're Russell Westbrook, after what you did in game one, knowing that Steph Curry was going to come out like this in game two, you had to help Kevin Durant out. And Kevin Durant didn't have much help last night in that regard. So that's something to pay attention to. That's something to notice because I expect to see a different Russell Westbrook, something akin to what I saw in the second half of game one once game three and four roll around in Oklahoma City. We'll see how he does then. I hear what you're saying. I said yesterday, I thought Steph owed his team a quarter last night, at least a quarter. After the fourth quarter, he didn't show up for the night before, or the game before. And yet, Stephen A., as you point out, while he's just, just 
going off on Oklahoma City. I, I look at the third quarter box, and you're going to have to explain this one to me. Russell Westbrook took one shot in that third quarter and missed it. He was 0 for 1. Kevin Durant in the first half obviously made 9 of 13 for 23 points. And in that third quarter, as Steph was going off, Kevin Durant took a total of two shots and hit one of them. Well, how do you, okay, so, so your two big guns, one goes one for two and one goes 0 for one while the, the roof is falling in on you. I, I just don't get it. it it's, it's like they well, were overwhelmed by the flurry in the moment. And not just that, sometimes they're turning the ball over, they which did. leads to the flurry. It, it did. And that's what happens. See, yep. in other words, if you're not turning the ball over and you're being efficient in terms of scheme and you're just missing shots, but then they only combine to attempt three shots, that's an entirely, di entirely different matter and your point is valid. The problem is when they were trying to do something, they actually spearheaded Golden State's offense because they were turning the ball over, which is what we had concerns about against how, what they would do against San Antonio, what they would do in these playoffs because of what we saw from them in the regular season when they gave up 15 fourth quarter leads over the course of an 82-game season. That was the trepidation about the Oklahoma City Thunder, and it reared its head in the third quarter last night. Kevin Durant in the third quarter alone had three turnovers, which just that, that won't hack it at Golden State. Kevin had eight for the game. You know and I know, it just won't work. So at home, if, if you're going to do that, maybe you'd get away with a little more of that. But I told you going into the series, in those three regular season games, Oklahoma City averaged 18 turnovers a game. It'll just get you beaten every time. And it, it barely did in a couple of those games, but it, it, it well, got them. One of the things that I noticed about them, too, when you talk about Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant, y'all, don't you notice, Skip, whether it's one or the other going back and forth, they always combine for like 11 or 12 turnovers a game. Like, just by, just by themselves. Just by themselves. You can't have that against this team, no. against this Golden State Warriors team. That's opportunities that they will absolutely capitalize on. Absolutely. Yeah, I thought Steph was getting a little carelessly cute with the ball, especially in game one and in the first half last night. He cleaned it up in the second half. So it, it becomes turnovers are crucial with these two teams because, as you say, when you turn it over, you don't just lose a possession. You give them a breakaway possession, and it just they just got run off the floor. I, I didn't think it was a it good isn't. sign for OKC, but we'll see if they it can wasn't bounce a back. good sign. It wasn't a good sign for them. You see a game like that, and it tells you they'll likely lose this series. Anything could happen. Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook can change anything. But if you're prognosticating, you look at a game like that and it gives you the impression Golden State can amp it up anytime they want. That's the impression it gives you. No question. Game three Sunday, that one's in OKC. But we have a game two tonight in Cleveland. The Cavs have yet to drop a game this postseason and they are looking like the favorites to win it all.